we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. God placed on Him the sin of us all. So that He could justify the sins of the whole world. It's, it's my hope that, that that message is just everywhere you look. And, and I think the only way that's going to happen is if it's on your mind. Hey, because you ever notice that? Like, like when you really focus on something and, and you're just really thinking about it, that, that quite often it, it just pops up everywhere. Like if you're thinking about a, a car especially, right? You're going to get a... You're going to get a gray Jeep, right? I, just, I, got a, a gray, I have a gray Jeep. And so um, I, I have never seen that color before or that Jeep before as much as I do now. It just kind of is everywhere. And you might be like, well, Pastor, that's, that's, that's just a coincidence, and, and, and you're reading into it. Uh, but I think that's the point, isn't it? That you would read into everything what God has done for you and who you are because of Him. Because what's happened to me like just every single day, it seems like this whole idea that we're talking about with this peace of mind series, like what do I dwell on? Like, like what am I thinking about? Like, like is there a battle for my mind? And so when I go online, the, the blogs that I look at, they're, they're, they're talking about that. And, and, and I go and do my Bible reading uh, on, on the YouVersion app. And, and, and the other day, one of the, one of the devotional things was, was about that. Like, what are you thinking about? And I'm like, wow, maybe God's trying to tell me something. Maybe I need to take this seriously. And I pray that we do that. Like, so sometimes, now again, reading into something is, can be dangerous, <laughs> obviously, if, it's, if you're trying to justify yourself. But, but really, when we're talking about what God is doing and who He is, that's kind of the point. That's what we should be doing. Interpreting things from His point of view. So, I was thinking about that. I was noticing how that stuff was everywhere. And, and just the other day, we were over in Lancaster, and we passed this little stand. Uh, and it's like a little tiny store uh, run by an Amish lady. And I look over, and I see this picture, right, this, this frame thing. And I'll read what it says. It says, pray about it as much as you think about it. Pray about it as much as you think about it. And it was weird because... That's kind of what's been on my mind. We, we obsess about these things, but, but, but are we praying about them? And I thought that's, that's an example of what I've been thinking about, what I've been talking about, and how I was going to start this sermon. I'm like, it's right there. Let's pray about it. Why, why aren't we taking those things to God? We want peace, and we look at that Philippians passage a couple weeks ago, and that's what it said. Like, if you take everything to him, you're going to have this peace of God that passes all human understanding. It's going to guard your heart. It's going to be like an, a sentinel that guards your heart and mind in Christ. But here's the thing. How are you going to read all that? What was happening to me? What happens to you? Is it a God thing, or is it just, well, it's just coincidence? Or it's weird. I came close to saying how weird it is that that was on that saying. Because I didn't write that saying on there. The, the people at the store wrote that on there. I, I'm going to see it as God trying to get my attention. He wants me to pray to him. He, he wants me to trust him. He wants me to look to him for everything that I need. Now, we're in this, uh, in this passage from... Uh, from, from Philippians 4. Uh, and, and again, that's the whole point. Whatever is, and, and we talked last week about whatever is, what were the two things that, that we looked at? We looked at whatever is true and honorable. Today we're going to look at what is just and pure. And we want to think about those things. We want those things to be what are, what's on your mind when you get up in the morning, throughout your day, when you, when you head to sleep. Whatever is, are, is both of those things. Because I, I think it's just so true how what you think about 
And honestly, what you think about a situation, what you think about the Word, what you think about every sermon that you hear, every song, every Christian lyric that you come across, is it for you? Is it something about you? Or is it something about somebody in your life who you're kind of angry with <laughs> and they need to hear that? Or is it God talking to you? Your interpretation of that, the way you think about that, is going to make a big difference. And all this reminded me of a, uh, of a truth I learned in seminary. It was in one of my counseling classes. And this thing has been a game changer for me. And, and, I, and I pray it will help you as well. He said, he said okay, there's, a, there's an event that happens, something that happens to you. Let's, let's pick something that happens to all of us. You're driving down the road and somebody cuts you off. Okay, or doesn't let you in, in a merge, whatever, whatever happens. And, and so in that moment, that's what happened to you. Now, how many times do you go right to the emotion of that? I'm angry. How dare they? I'm the king of the universe. How dare they not let me in? How dare they cut me off? How dare they tailgate me? And I get mad and I get angry. I might speed up. I might slow down if they're behind me. None of those things will help the situation, by the way, and you know that. So, so there was an event. Notice there was an emotion, and then there was a reaction based on the emotion. Now, what did I skip? And it's the thing that we all skip. In fact, we say when those things happen, right, when you're, when you're with the kids and they're all going crazy, right, and they're, and they're just doing their own thing, and you're like, you make me so mad. Does, does anyone make you mad? No. Now, they may have done something that, that you didn't like. But you didn't have to be mad. You didn't have to get angry. You didn't have to yell back at them. You didn't have to give them the cold shoulder, whatever it was. See, because there's a little thing called your, your thought that's right in the middle. So the event happens, and you have a, an idea about it. You have a thought about it. You process it. You, you interpret it. You run it through your filter. And hopefully you're going to run it through the filter that we're going to talk about today. And you're going to see it the way God wants you to see it. Because far too often I'm like, I, you know, you're either the queen of the universe, the king of the universe, whatever throne you happen to sit on. And heaven forbid that, that the people around don't like acknowledge that and bow down and, and, and just give you a wide breath to do whatever you want. See, if that's the way you think, you're always going to be angry and you're always going to lash out. But what if you remembered, hey, I'm a child of God. Like, I've been forgiven. Like, like I, 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 and maybe I should have left for work a little earlier today. Maybe that's why I was, I was a little, you know, got a little angry when that person did that to me. Because you never know. I've heard stories where, where, where somebody gets angry at somebody and, and, and kind of reads them the riot act, only to find out that they just came from getting a cancer diagnosis from the doctor or news that their mom had died, and they are just a mess. And yeah, they acted like that because they were a mess. See, see what I'm saying? There was the event. Now, if you, if you stop to think and stop to ask and stop to do what God would have you do, your emotion's going to be way different, right? Your, your emotion's going to be compassion, empathy, love, forgiveness, grace for that person. And, and, and you're going to respond, and your action is going to be a loving one, isn't it? See how it works? So, so I, I really believe that's what's going on in this uh, 1 John passage. Let's, let's turn to that, 1 John 3, verses. We're going to start in, in, in verse 1. Now, as I read this, as we go through this, I want you to say, okay, the event, there's, there's an event here. There's what God has done for you. And I want you to process that event uh, alongside every other event in your life. Because that's what God wants you to do. He doesn't want you to just say, all right, I'm done with church. I'm going to go home. And, and, and everything I read and heard and, and we sang about, I'm just going to leave it here. I'll pick it up again when I come back next week. Was, was that why you got out of bed this morning? I don't think so. I think all of us are like, I, I want God to say something to me. I want, I want something to happen in my life. That's why we're here. And so John says, see what kind of love. And, and there's, that's a similar word to what we had in when, when Paul says to, to think about these things and to, and to ponder them. And to, he's like, look, I want you to take notice of this. What kind of love the Father has given to us 
that we should be called children of God. And so we are what? So we are. He didn't say, so we might be, so we're working towards, so we hope to be one day. He goes, no, that's who you are, a child of God. Now, sometimes when we read that, and we're reading about an event that God actually did for us, something he actually did. He gave us his love and now calls us children of God. He's changed our reality, changed who we are. Now, I can look at that and go, uh, it doesn't matter. I can blow that off. I can ignore that. I can think I'm not worthy of that because of my past or because of what's going on in my life. But he's saying, look, God has given, has loved us with a love that is unconditional, with a love that is just amazing. See, he knew and knows every single thing about you. Uh, in the early service, I referenced sort of the, the junk drawer of your soul. Uh, God knows what's in there, by the way. Y'all have one. I have one. It, it, you, right? It's like your junk drawer at home. You don't let anybody in, right? People come into your house. You don't look and say, hey, check out this junk drawer or the junk room that you have or maybe the junk section of your house that you might have where all the stuff that you don't know what to do with, you put it there. It's ugly. It's, it's kind of a mess. If you were to walk through there, you might get hurt. He knows what's in there. All those things. I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to deal with this, right? This is so dark. This is so bad. And we hide it. And he's like, I know all of it. And yet, I died for you. And yet, I was willing to go to a cross. And he did. That's what this love he's talking about is, 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 is about. And he says, that means that you're a child of God. And so the reason why the world doesn't know us is it didn't know him. How many times do we get angry at people who don't know Jesus because they act like they don't know Jesus? Oh, those, those, you know what I'm saying? And fill in the blank. Again, we don't have to agree. But you know what? I should be acting like a child of God. And, and, and they're just acting like who they are. And if I want them to be a child of God as well, I get my thought about what they, maybe what they say. Cause maybe they, maybe they, they, get, they get on me for being a Christian. Maybe, maybe they don't like the way my values and the way that I do life and, and the things that I think are wrong that maybe they think are right. We're, that, that's exactly where we're in right now. Okay? Go on social media when you get home. That's what you will see. Right is wrong, wrong is right. Bad is good, good is bad, and you can't tell me any different. My truth is what, okay? That's how it's like when we don't know Christ, right? When we don't know the truth, right? We're not free. And so, so I believe John is going like, hey, like, like let's respond in love. Let's respond, let's, let's us be about truth. And, and love the people around us, especially people who are brothers and sisters in the faith. He says, beloved, we're God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. In other words, we have this incredible standing and, 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 and status as his kids. But you know what? But when he appears, we're going to be like him. I mean, are you tracking with that? He's saying, look, when Jesus comes again, you are going to be, if you're alive or if you're dead, you're going to be transformed and you will have a body like his, right? Scripture all over the place talks about that. It's called the resurrection. It's why Easter was such a big deal a couple of weeks ago and still is today. It's everything because it's our hope. It means that I, that I won't die. Like eternally, I will not die, but I will live and I will be like him. You know why? Because I'm going to see him as he is. What an awesome thing. So, so he's going, look, you got it all now, and, and you can't even imagine what's coming for you later. And that's important because the next verse says, and everyone, and, and he means all of us, who hope in him in that way, who, who go, man, I am saved I am his. I am a child of God. I can't wait for his return because it means that I will live forever. What's my, what's my response? Like, if that's true, and it is, he says what we should see across the board is, is all of us purifying ourselves as he is pure. 
And what he means there is saying, like, like what other way would I want to live? But to, but, to, but to not give room for all, the, for all the garbage in my life, for things that God would call sin, right, for things that would pull me away from him, that would, that would be like a, an unwelcome uh, presence in my soul and in my life that would, that would cause me to, to maybe curse the people around me or get angry or fuel any of those things in my heart or in my mind, right? I want to be pure as he is pure, and by the way, if you begin to think that you're pure, <laughs> you're far from it. Okay? If you're having a little conversation with someone about how pure you are and, and, where, and where your purity level is today, uh, you've mixed in a whole bunch of pride. Okay? That's, that, see, that's the thing. It's not about your title. It's not about your level. Listen, he said you're already children of God. Does it get any better than that? And when he comes back, he's coming for you, and he's going to transform your, your body, right? Whether it's, whether you're, whether, again, whether you're in the grave or, or just walking around. It's going to be a great day. So why wouldn't we want to live like him and be like him? That's the whole point. It's, it's, it's getting at this desire. It's all how you see it. How we, how, what are we thinking about? How do we interpret all of this? And, 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 and John just is very clear. This is so helpful for us because we want to say, well, isn't there a gray area? He says, no, because if you make a practice of sinning, you also practice lawlessness. He says, sin is lawlessness. It's, again, it's rejecting what God is saying. Now, now, he's going to a very much an extreme here. So if you're here and you're like, man, I'm struggling, I'm trying to deal with this stuff, you know, that's different than saying, he's, he's talking about someone who just says, I just don't care. I just don't care. So he's saying, again, what do, you th- how, what do you think about God's law? What do you think about the way he says to live? Because if we're his children, we're like, wow, that's awesome. Because that brings me peace, that brings me hope, that brings me joy. This, this other lawlessness stuff, it gets me lawlessness. It gets me chaos and, and, and all sorts of trash in my life. Uh, in verse 5, is, in case you missed the rest of it <laughs> that he talked about, he goes, you know, he's assuming that all of us know that when Jesus appeared, he came to our world to suffer on the cross. Why? To take away sins. And in him, there is no sin. So if you want to look at what the, the, the picture of just and righteous and pure is that we should dwell on, it's Jesus. Look at how he loved people perfectly. People that, listen, that everyone else thought were just dirt and scum, tax collectors, prostitutes, sinners, wicked people that everyone else wrote off and said, you know, I don't have time for them. Leave them alone. I might get spiritual cooties going anywhere near them, right? Jesus is like, no, let, let, it, let, them, let the little children right, come to me, the hopeless ones, the ones that that don't have a leg to stand on, the ones that, that, that really feel like they are just out of God's, like, like league, or, 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 you know what I mean? He, he says, I came for them. I'm going to die for them. I'm going to rise for them. Hey, that's, that's, that's who he is, and that's what he did. And, and so in verse 6, he says, so, so no one who abides in him is going to keep on sinning. Has anyone, and anybody here, I'm going to take a little kind of a quick poll, okay? Anyone heard the voice of Jesus, right? As you're praying, you're looking at the scripture, and it says, yes, you should exact revenge on that person who posted all that junk about you. You should just curse them out and, and, and go after them. Anybody have, anybody get God's direction to do that? Yeah, go hurt them. Get them, get them, Fred. They hurt you. You get them, right? Eye for an eye, right? You know, you got to get them. Is that, is, is, did, did, are you going to get God's direction to go and, 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 and just be unfaithful to somebody in your life? Cheat, it, cheat on the test at school? A- any kids pray and God goes, oh yeah, the Lord clear, clearly told me that I should blow up my homework and then cheat on the test. You didn't hear that from God. So he's saying, so why would we continue when, when he's, he's not telling us those things? It's the devil telling us. It's our own sinfulness telling us to do those things. 
So he says that, that if, if we're going to keep on sinning, if, and again, his, the, 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 what he's trying to get at is the person, for, and, and, and even of us, if we're struggling with this, that where I say, like, it just doesn't matter, I'm just going to jump in both feet. Or just have an attitude where I don't care. He says, don't let anyone s- deceive you. If you practice righteousness, well, that's because you've been made right by God, by Jesus. And, and so you want to be righteous as he is righteous. And then he just kind of like just stops playing around with it at all. And says, okay, if you make a practice of sinning, that, that's the devil's move. Right? And, and so you're, if that's what you do, if that characterizes your life, if someone were to look at, at me or at you and go, hey, man, that guy's a sinner, that guy likes to sin, it's kind of like they're working for, for the devil and not for God. Why? Because he's been sinning from the beginning. And the reason that the Son of, of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. So it doesn't just get down to who I am, but who he is. Jesus is perfect. The devil, his whole thing is to shut us down, to shut us from, away from thinking that we would even want to be pure or to have any shot at, 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 at like purity in our lives. Because again, purity is not about bragging rights. It's not about posting it on your, on your Instagram thing. It, you know, purity is saying, look, I, I just don't want these other things in my life. Because they're not from God. I, I want what he has. I want to fill my life with what he's got. And I'm going to take all of my sin. I'm going to bring it to him. I'm going to confess all of that because he loves me and he died to forgive me. And he's going to do that. So I don't make a practice of it. We should encourage each other not to make a practice of it. Why? In verse 9, because his seed abides in us. He's planted his word in us. His hope, his peace, it's all there and he doesn't keep on sinning because he's been born of God. And so there's the, there's the evidence between children born of God and children, born, and children who are of the devil. Because that person does not practice righteousness, is not of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. So what he does is he gets down to like the practical thing. And this is kind of where we'll end. Because you might think, well, that's kind of vague. Be pure, be, be right. But time after time, if you look at 1 John, it's, it's real simple. It's like, how do you love your brothers and sisters? Like, like how do you see them? Like right now, is there somebody who, who is a believer in Jesus Christ, a fellow child of God, who you would say, I can't stand that person? Like, let's take that to God. We're going to do some confession in a few minutes, and maybe that's something we need to bring. Because maybe I got some issues with somebody in the body of Christ, even. And he's saying that that has no place. Now, you may not love everything about somebody, right? You know, like um, they might be a Giants fan or something like that, and you're like, oh. you know, it just makes it tough. You know what I mean? But, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where it's like just, it's, it's a barrier. Like, like you just don't like them. You're, you're angry with them. There, there, there's something that needs to be addressed. Because he said, this is the message that you heard from the beginning. And this should, this should be how we see everything, every event, right? How do I love? How, how can this be an opportunity for me to show love and forgiveness and, and hope and grace to somebody? But he said that we should love one another. It's like sort of the, the, a foundational truth. Last week, we, we had Joseph as an example of what it meant to be, uh, you know, like do things the right way. Cain is the example of, of what it looks like and where it gets us, where hatred gets us, where a, uh, a discouraging of righteousness of other people, because let's, let's be honest, don't we sometimes when we're dealing with our stuff, or actually should I say when we're not dealing with our stuff, I look at somebody who's doing it, Who's, who's living God's way, and what do we do? Oh, he's not real. Oh, she's just, she's fake. She's so fake, right? We'll do that. But he's saying, hey, just so you know, like that was probably Cain's issue. He looked at Abel and went, oh, goody two shoes. Oh, look at me. He's always, always trying to get, trying to be better, trying to be better. 
What if we encouraged each other to be better? Like, what if we encouraged each other to, to remember that we were children of God? What if we encouraged each other to love as we've been loved and forgive as we've been forgiven? What if we did that? With Cain, it led to murder. And he did it because his, his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. So I, I'd say with everything that we experience, again, let's go back that we're children of God, we're loved by Him, forgiven by Him, set free by Him. And let that truth dictate your emotions and dictate your response. Let that be how you act, how you love, how you help. And I, and I think we'll see just amazing things, especially the peace of God that we've been after. He's right there.